OK. It seems to be working now. Um, any questions about the project as you're thinking about it? I, I got one uh, a call on Friday from a student who already has some savings and uh, has already worked and has like a, an existing retirement account and they were asking whether they should integrate that into the project and my answer was absolutely you know try and make this as realistic as possible and so if you already have an idea of you know for example assets or if you have loans and you want to try and integrate that uh, current asset status into the project and the spreadsheet that you're going to be making I really encourage you to go ahead move forward with that and make it as applicable as you can. What we're going to do today is talk about a rate of return analysis and analyzing a single project for the rate of return. So this is a new way to compare alternatives that we're working towards. In the past you've learned about present worth analysis and future worth analysis and annual worth analysis and all three of those approaches can be used to pick alternatives and identify which project should be done rate of return analysis is another one of those and so we're going to get kind of the beginning taste today of how to do rate of return analysis and uh, consider the following example what if you were thinking about going into business and you have an entrepreneurial streak and you decided that you wanted to start selling hot dogs we all know that hot dogs are really popular in the tri-state area there are loads of restaurants that sell hot dogs and um, so what if you decided you wanted to get a food truck that sold hot dogs and I looked this up recently the cost of a typical food truck is about eighty five thousand dollars and that includes the vehicle as well as all of the kitchen supplies and equipment that you would need in order to uh, you know, have an operational kitchen on wheels so eighty five grand that's a lot of money up front so if you're spending that much up front you're gonna want a pretty good return and I found for this particular food truck, Disco Dogs, one of the hot dogs that they sell, the number two, is called Lucky Chucky. And you can see they charge $8.50 for a single hot dog, and that seems pretty steep to me. But it sounds delicious, you know, bacon, fried onions, green peppers, cheese Whiz, sliced tomato, lettuce, mustard. Sounds great. I don't know that I'd pay $8.50 for it, but maybe if it's big. So the question is, if you buy a food truck for $85,000 and you're selling hot dogs for $850, how long until you break even? So if you can do the math, you can see, well, it's approximately 10,000 hot dogs that you're going to have to sell. But remember, keep in mind the time value of money. You can't sell 10,000 hot dogs the same day that you take out the loan. Those hot dogs are going to be sold in the future. And so if you take out a loan for $85,000, that loan is going to be accumulating interest. And so you'll be making revenue every month or every year. You'll have a, a certain amount of revenue that you'll use to pay off the loan. And hopefully you're going to continue to uh, have enough revenue that you can break even and have a profit. But the question is how long until you pay it off? And that's what we're going to take a look at today with the spreadsheet file that I sent you as a beginning template. Um, about a half hour before class, I sent an email that has an Excel file that we're going to use as a starting point for today's in-class exercise. And in that template, what we're going to do is we're going to ask the question, how long will it take to pay off the food truck? Now, we're going to do it by calculating something called the unrecovered investment balance. And the unrecovered investment balance you can think of as um, if you've borrowed money, it's what your loan balance is. But if you are using your own funds to buy this food truck, you have to think in terms of the opportunity cost. Because you could have taken that $85,000 and put it somewhere else. And so if it's your own money, then it's an investment that you haven't yet recovered because you bought the food truck and you haven't got back dollars in exchange for that original investment. And so if we were going to do a graphical representation of what happens with an unrecovered investment, there's a certain initial purchase price that you make. And so you can see that you've made a purchase some amount at time zero and then during the first year the interest amount, uh, the interest is bringing the unrecovered balance higher 
And so now think about why that would be. Um, it's because the interest is due on the previous balance. And so this is how much, let's think about it in terms of if you paid out of your own pocket. You paid out of your own pocket and, and so you have an unrecovered balance. And it's positive, it's above the horizontal axis because by definition, the, the name of this axis is unrecovered investment balance. And so we already know that we're in the red, so to speak, that we haven't recouped our original, original investment. So during the first year, the amount gets bigger because we would have been making some interest if we had put that investment somewhere else. And so there's some interest rate that applies here. Um, it could be the interest rate associated with your second best alternative. It could be the MAR, um, or it could be an interest rate that we're trying to solve for. You know, if, if we want to achieve break even after a certain number of years, then there is an unknown interest rate that will make that happen. The point is, is we know conceptually that during the first year that there's going to be an increase in the amount due. And then we get revenue at the end of the first year. We assume that it comes in during the end of the first period. And so that revenue brings the balance down. You can see revenue minus expenses. And so the food truck example, you're going to have to pay the labor. You're going to pay for the raw materials, for the fuel, insurance, um, health inspection fee. All of the costs of operating the business is going to reduce the amount of profits that you can put towards bringing down your unrecovered investment balance. So you have some profits and you set them aside. It brings down the unrecovered investment balance, but it's not yet down to zero. You still have not recovered all of the amount that you put up front. And so during the next year, the same thing happens. The balance accumulates based on how much unrecovered investment balance you still have, and then it comes down with a certain amount of revenue during the second year. And the process continues until eventually we achieve break-even. And break-even is when we finally have recovered our initial investment. Now here's uh, an important term. The internal rate of return is the interest rate value that causes the unrecovered investment balance to go down to zero at the end of a certain number of years. And um, broadly speaking, I prime is just the variable that we assign for an interest rate we're solving for. It's the internal rate of return that we're trying to determine. And um, today's not the first and only time that we're going to be solving for problems like this. To, in, in today's example, I'm going to tell you an interest rate, and we're going to simulate this figure. We're going to do the calculations that show an unrecovered investment balance going down to zero. But in a lot of other cases, I prime would be the unknown. Okay, so um, I've, I hope you have printed out the um, in-class exercises. The first part of this is hand calculations. And so with the uh, the scenario that's described, $85,000 from the bank, you're going to have a 4% interest five-year loan. Draw the cash flow diagram that shows that scenario, and then calculate the payment amount with the factor that I've given you, rather than have you look it up. I, and I want it to be accurate to the nearest penny. So that's also another reason why I gave you the factor, so I could make it really a lengthy one so we can be accurate to the nearest penny. So take a look at that and then um, we'll make sure we're on the same page with the paper calculations and then we'll talk about how to proceed with the spreadsheet. Pretty simple here. Uh, I think I've got it scanned so we can take a look. All right, so your uh, cash flow diagram should look like you get money from the bank, and then there's going to be a certain 
five repayments that's going to pay off the loan. You can see we know that this is a given 4% annual interest rate and we don't know the amount of the repayments that are due until we calculate it. And so I've listed this as A equals unknown. So that's the cash flow diagram. Now in part B we're calculating the amount. So if you multiply 85,000 by the factor and that tells us that each year we have to pay the bank $19,093.30. So what we're going to do now with the spreadsheet is we're going to go through the process of seeing how much of this $19,000 goes towards principal, how much of it goes towards interest, and we want to watch the balance of the loan go down to zero on a year-by-year -year basis. All right, so here's the template file that I sent to you uh, a few minutes before class. Now, you'll notice that the columns have both titles and also numbers. And the reason why I've given them numbers is so that below the table, I could give you some instructions on what should go into each column, just to, to help clarify what is meant by the title. So I'd like to pause and just see if you can figure out, based on the column formulas and based on each of the titles, what numbers should go into, uh, into this table. Now let me clarify one thing. You'll notice it doesn't start at zero. It starts with year one. And that's because we're going to differentiate between the beginning of the year. So the beginning of the first year is time zero. And then the end of the year, the end of the first year is time one. And so from the bank's perspective, the unrecovered principal balance is $85,000. That's how much you owe at the beginning of the first year. And so starting with that, I'd like you to uh, go through the process of figuring out what goes into each of these cells. And you'll notice from the column formulas how to handle the next row, starting with column one. And after a few minutes for you to get a head start, then I'll uh, chime in and I'll start to demonstrate how to solve this in case you get stuck or if you just want to verify that you've got the right answers based on what I do. Dr. Wright? Yes. Uh, so the interest rate is 4%, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to start talking through the process here on how to solve this one. If you've become stuck, why don't you just watch or if maybe you're already finished, you can also watch. Uh, but, it, you know, if you're making steady progress, then feel free to continue and ignore what I'm doing. All right, so uh, it's 4% interest, and so we need to have 0 0.04 up in cell B3. And then for the second column, the interest this year on the unrecovered balance. And so the interest is going to be on how much I've taken out and how much I haven't yet repaid. And so you'll see it says column two is the interest rate times the amount in column one. So I'm going to use the anchoring, the reference up here to B3, and I'll press the F4 button to put in those dollar signs, which always makes it look in that cell, times the beginning of the year amount. So that means that since I've taken out $85,000, I have to pay 4% of that this year as interest. That means that there's $3,400 in interest. Okay, so the balance at the uh, end of the period, just before the loan payment, you can see for that column, it's one plus two. And so the balance is how much you borrowed plus the interest. And so I owe $88,400. Now, previously, we calculated the payment amount using the factor method. And so that amount from the earlier part, Part B, was $19,093.30. Now, right now, it's set to only show the dollars. I could increase the digits here, and it would show those 30 cents that I typed in. They're still there, even if they're not shown.
So I'll just leave it only showing the dollar, but back, back of the Excel spreadsheet's mind, it, it knows that those 30 cents are there, and it will apply them as I do calculations, even if it's rounding off to the nearest dollar. All right, so how much of this payment, if we're paying 19000 and we only owe 3400 in interest, then the difference between those two will be how much goes towards the principal. And so you can see that the formula for column 5 is column 4 minus column 2. Now, logically, it makes sense. I provide these formulas, but I think that most of you could have figured this out even without those formulas. You don't have to have those, because logically, it just makes sense that the, uh, the payment amount is the principal, um, the return of principal, and the interest. And so of the 19,000, uh, 15,693 is going to be buying down the, the principal or the unrecovered in investment balance. And so um, column six is going to be this unrecovered balance minus this, which is the amount of our payment that wasn't going towards interest. And so that means now, I only, at the end of the first year, I only owe 69307 And so the end of the first year is the same thing as the beginning of the second year. That's the same instant in time. The end of year one and the beginning of year two is the same thing. And so here, I just say it is equal to, and I click on that cell location. And so the beginning of year two is the same as the end of year one. And that's what it says in the column formulas as well. All right. So I start off the year owing the bank 69307 And here's where it gets nice. I can click and drag, and I don't have to type all of those formulas in again. I can just have it automatically apply the same thing. And so highlight all of these cells. So I'm clicking and dragging to the right. And then I'm going to drag the, uh, the green thing. You see where it's just a little bit thicker at the lower right. So I'm going to click on that location and drag it down one. So it applied the formula, but it, it did one thing that's a little bit screwy. If you look at column E, it thought that there's a trend and it should increase the amount by a dollar. So Excel is trying to be helpful, but sometimes it makes mistakes. And this is a case where it did because it thought, well, this is a number that needs to increase by one for each row. So let me put that back. And now that I have put it back to the, the correct amount, if I click all of these and then I drag it, oh, let, let's do this. Um, Click it like that. So highlight everything so far. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's just do these ones. We may have to fix that column four a couple more times. All right, so we'll drag down to the very bottom. Yeah, we have to override Excel's propensity to count upwards. So when we fix that, It takes the balance down to zero by the end of the fifth year. And that's what we know should happen. And so that's a, con that's a confirmation that we probably did this right. So what it shows us is that over time, how much of your $19,093 is going to cover interest is decreasing. And the amount of this payment that's covering the principal is going up. And um, yeah, it, it goes back down towards zero in the end. And so what this means is that at a 4% interest rate, if we're making these $19,000 and $19,093 payments each year to the bank, then we can pay off the balance of the loan after five years. And from the perspective of what if this was your money to begin with and it hadn't been a loan, then that means after five years of operation, you're, break, you're broken even. And so um, that means that you now 
have paid off the cost of the food truck and then any future additional revenue you make on top of that um, is going to be money in your pocket, so to speak, where um, your original balance investment has been paid off. And so this is our first uh, taste of the internal rate of return. And we'll continue talking about that in class on Wednesday. So before we go our separate ways for today, are there any questions on this spreadsheet? If something comes up, feel free to uh, give me a call on Teams. But let me make this suggestion. Be sur sure and save what you've just done. You'll need to do this again in the future. So save this so that you have it as a reference. And, uh, you know, if I went through any certain part of it a little too quickly, the video will be posted on both Blackboard and on YouTube um, within about an hour of the close of our class meeting. So you can watch through it again or give me a call on Teams. All right, so that's it for today. Let me just refresh your memory about the announcements that your next homework assignment is due a week from today and also start thinking about the project. All right, that's it, everyone. Have a good day.